Okay, hi everybody. I'm just trying to straighten this up. Um, I'm using my iPad today, so I have to hold it in my hand. <laughs> um, yes, let's just see how we go today. Uh, so welcome everybody. Um, welcome to all the new members and so forth. How are you guys doing today? It's a very hot day outside. Um, I'm just going to turn the music down a little so I can talk to you for a bit. Um, so to, yeah, today we're so excited because we've been able to um, work on our YouTube channel and my husband has been working really hard to try and put all the seven months worth of videos um, online. And it is, it's not easy, it is, it's quite a time consuming job too, so I'm really grateful for all the work that he's been putting into it. And his, um, I mentioned his OCD really does help us because he's quite accurate. He's trying to put everything in order so it's easier for, for you to just go in there. If you've missed any lives, then he, he puts them up straight away, okay? Um, all the lives from this week are, have been put up there. And he's got, just look. And actually, just, please just go in there and, and like and subscribe to my channel. We're so new at this, but we are, you know, we really have a strong desire to share our message with everybody. Um, so yeah, get in there and share the the content and and watch it and um, enjoy. So we've finally, finally after all these years, been able to put something out. Okay. Um, so I'm going to get straight into the lesson today because we have another live at 4:30. So I want to have a bit of time to charge up our gadgets and stuff. They're actually halfway right now, so I'll try and get through this quickly. Um, so we'll start with a prayer as normal. Hope you guys are doing okay. Feel free to share any uh, comments and say hi. And um, yeah, just tell us how you're doing. How you're doing with your study. Because we are interested. It's not just about us getting, delivering the message. We are actually um, concerned for each one of you. And at some stage I'll try and get some time to message each one of you in the group. And, and just see how you're doing, okay? Um, hi, Paul. Hi! <laughs> um, nice of you to join us. Okay, I'm just going to go straight into the person. Now, we usually play music in the beginning of um, each of the lives, and like my husband has just been learning that just a few technical things that he has to be mindful of um, when putting things on YouTube. So, we're learning through the whole process, just bear with us. Um, but, um, and, and all the videos are quite raw. We're not professionals at what we do. We just love sharing our message and it is what it is right now. Um, he does try and give me some tips to improve myself. So he said, no more um, leaving a big, you know, uh, when he watches the videos, it's like in the beginning, it's just all quiet. So he says, as soon as you get on there, start talking, okay? Um, so yeah, getting some good criticism from it. And if you have any comments to share about um, ways we can improve, to, we're happy to, to hear. We're happy to hear. Um, but we're really excited about sharing this message, you know, sharing with anybody. Um, because we just, I don't know, there's this big feeling in us at the moment, you know, that this is good. And it, it's, it's what others may be needing right now. Um, <sighs> Gosh, I just think it's just such a blessing that we can, we are able to do this and the use of technology allows us to. Um, and we're so ready for it. We're really excited about it. So I know you guys are not that excited about it, but we are absolutely excited about it because we don't know how to do anything. And we are just nobody. We're just actually nobody. <laughs> but we love doing this work. And it's actually helping us in, in the things that we're going through here. Uh, it keeps us busy and it keeps keeps us where we should be so it, it's we love it we love it honestly okay so i'm going to go through the prayer soon and then we'll go through the come follow me lesson all right um feel free to share any comments or um yeah anything just talk to us okay uh all right this is a come follow me lesson so what we encourage in come follow me is discussion you know, share your thoughts, impressions, um, things that you have pondered in your own personal study, share it all. Okay, and experiences too, we do that as well, and testimony, so we keep it quite real. Um, so for now, I'm just going to go into the prayer. <laughs> I said that like a few times and I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to do it right now. 
day. Our dear Father in heaven, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity that we have to be here today. We give thanks unto thee for the many blessings that thou hast blessed us with. And we pray, Father, for uh, our spirit to be here with us as we learn and share with each other. Um, the scriptures that we have to share today, we pray that thy spirit may help us understand these things and be able to uh, learn and apply these teachings into our daily lives to improve ourselves and to improve our, uh, our faith and courage and our testimonies. We're grateful, Father, for this wonderful opportunity we're able to share with others and we're mindful of each one of those who uh, may be watching. Uh, we pray for uh, each one that they may feel thy spirit and we pray that thy spirit may teach us the truth of all things we're grateful father for these blessings and favors we ask god in the name of our son jesus christ amen amen okay so i'm going to go straight into the lesson and i'll try and keep it as uh brief as possible but the the thing about it is that we do have to go through the scripture references we need to revisit those and sometimes it can be a bit long and time consuming but there is snippets of gold in all, all the stuff that we read all the scriptures that we read um at the beginning of the week uh we did read the whole of joseph smith history so we actually focus on joseph smith history um one this is 21 to 26 today that that is what we're reading today uh we did read the whole thing in the beginning of the week and it does give us a context of what is actually happening. Uh, so before we go into the scripture reading, I'll read the, what Come Follow Me actually wants us to study about today, okay? What it wants us to focus on. Right at the end, there are like two important questions that we'll talk about at the end of uh, our reading, okay? Okay, here we go. Joseph Smith History 1, 21 to 26. I can remain true to what I know even if others reject me. Um, I love this topic. I think it's something that a few of us will be able to relate with, um, especially those who have made changes to uh, live the gospel and who may be going through a bit of persecution. And it's, it's any kind of persecution. It could be through uh, people you associate with. It could be, you know, friends, family, and so forth. Anyway, we'll, we'll see how we go as we, as we get through. One of the blessings of the scriptures is that they can, they can, contain inspiring examples of valiant men and women who face challenges with faith in Jesus Christ. When Joseph Smith faced opposition because of his vision, he identified with the Apostle Paul, who was also persecuted for saying he had seen a vision. As you read Joseph's account, what inspires you to remain true to your testimony? What other examples from the scriptures or from people you know give you courage to stay true to the spiritual experiences you have had? And those are pretty um, awesome questions there. So I'll go through them again, just so you know, see what comes to you. So as we read Joseph's account, what inspires you to remain true to your testimony? And everybody's testimony is different. So what inspires you mm -hmm. to remain true? Um, what other examples from scriptures, like who else from scripture, inspires you who also may have been persecuted um, but remain faithful to their testimony true to their testimony uh, so from the scriptures or people you know give you courage to stay true to the spiritual experiences you have had all right so we're going to go straight to the um joseph smith history and we'll do a bit of reading from there uh and then we'll have a bit of discussion, okay? All right. Now, bear with me on my reading. I love it when the hours are here because they um, they take that pressure off me. But if my reading is a bit uh, uh, mud, bear with me. And uh, we'll see how we get through. All right, Joseph Smith, History 1, 21 to 26. Fill a great price. Verse 21. So we are... You know, this is the setting of what happened to Joseph. Some few days after I had this vision, I happened to be in company with one of the Methodist preachers who was very active in 
the before mentioned religious excitement. In conversing with him on the subject of religion, I took occasion to, to give him an account of the vision which I had had. I was greatly surprised at this behavior. He treated my communication not only lightly, but with great contempt, saying it was all of the devil, that there were no such things as visions or revelations in these days, and that such things had ceased with the apostles, and that there would never be any more of them. Okay, so quite interesting. Um, as soon as he, Joseph talks about his experience, he is already faced with opposition. And this comes to a surprise to him because um, in respect, he, he sees the preacher as a man of God, <clears throat> and yet he is opposing um, his experience. All right, let's carry on. Verse 22, I soon found, however, that my telling the story had excited a great deal of prejudice against me, uh, against me among the professors, professors of religion. And it's interesting to, to hear also um, about the experience. This is a 14-year-old boy. Okay, carry on. And was the, was the cause of great persecution, which continued to increase. And though I was an obscure boy, only between 14 and 15 years of age, and my circumstances in life, such as to make a boy of no consequence in the world, yet of men yet men of high standing were taken out as sufficient to excite the public mind against me and created bitter persecution and this was common among all the, the sects all united to persecute me um, so it seems a bit uh, strange that all the professors actually I'll come back to this because I do, there is something that I actually do like about this all the uh, professors of religion had found cause uh, to persecute this young boy. Why? You know, it just didn't make sense to him. All right, verse 23, and it caused me serious reflection then and often has since. How very strange it was that an obscure boy of a little over 14 years of age and one to who was doomed to the necessity of obtaining a scanty maintenance by his daily labor, should be thought a character of sufficient importance to attract the attention of the great ones, of the most popular six of the day, in a manner, in a manner to create in them a spirit of most bitter persecution and reviling. Mm, interesting, but strange or not, so it was, and it was often the cause of great sorrow to myself. Um, yeah, it is quite strange that a 14 year old boy would would um, have so much attention on him and persecution was, was great. And this is coming from, this is what I find interesting about it, that these professors of religion who know God, who know very well what is true, find it in them to persecute this young boy who's talking about a vision that he had. And I just think it's a little strange that they were given that much attention. Um, <laughs> One thing comes to my mind is that what I've always said in the live series that when people say truth, they know uh, it is truth, right? When people hear truth, they know that it is true. Uh, but the reaction, like to me, the professors of religion are really just reacting to the truth that they heard. Okay, but that's just me. That's my thoughts, um, my opinions. But um, why would they react so, you know? Why would they give me so much attention if they disregarded it as if, you know, it wasn't true? Anyway, just my thoughts, people. Okay, verse 24. However, it was nevertheless a fact that I had beheld a vision. That's what I love about him. He, he's, he's still true to his testimony of what he knows to be true. And he explains why. Uh, carry on. I have thought since that I felt much like Paul when he made his defense before King Agrippa and related the account of the vision he had when he saw a light and heard a voice. But still, there were but few who believed him. Some said he was dishonest, others said he was mad, and he was ridiculed and reviled. But all this did not destroy the reality of his vision. He had seen a vision, he knew he had, 
and all the persecution under the heaven could not make it otherwise. And though they should persecute him unto death, yet he knew and would know to the latest breath that he had both seen a light and heard a voice speaking unto him. And all the world could not make him think or believe otherwise. Beautiful um, example that he shares about Paul. Now, for those who don't know anything about Paul, Paul was quite a, he was a, well, he had such a, a great story of, of conversion and, and quite a powerful one, actually. Um, so much so that, I mean, he used to persecute people that believed in God. I mean, he killed them. That was his job. Um, until the Lord uh, gave him a moment where it enlightened his mind and heart to know what the truth was. And from that day onward, it, it, it changed his whole life that he served God. And uh, for him to, yeah, this is the thing about Joseph, he's only a 14, 15 year old boy, but he knew, he, like his faith already, um, I don't know, he just knew in his heart that uh, these things are true. I think at some stage it comes to a point where that will be your saving grace, whether you know that these things are true, it comes from your heart. Um, and, it, and it comes from a place of faith, you know, not knowing things, but knowing in your heart that they are true. <sighs> and I think this young 14 year old boy is such a great example to be talking about, you know, the, using Paul, um, who was, who he was such a great example. He was uh, of faith and courage. Despite the persecution, he did not give up. For many years, he served the Lord. Okay, um, verse 25, and he did not doubt it, that these things were true. All right, so Joseph is going to explain a little bit more about himself, okay, and his experience. Verse 25, so it was with me, I had actually seen a light, and in the midst of that light, I saw two personages, and they did in reality speak to me, and though I was hated, Though I was hated and persecuted for saying that I had seen a vision, yet it was true. Can't see <laughs> It was true. And while they were persecuting me, reviling me, and speaking all manner of evil against me, falsely for saying, I was led to say in my heart, why persecute me for telling the truth? I have actually, I have actually seen a vision, and who am I that I can withstand God? Or why does the world think to make me deny that I have actually seen? For I had seen a vision; I knew it, and I knew that God knew it, and I could not deny it. Neither did I do it. At least I knew that by so doing, I would offend God. And come under condemnation. <sighs> Verse 26. I had now got my mind satisfied. So far as this sectarian world. Was concerned. That it was not my duty to join. With any of them. But to continue as I was. Until further directed. I have found the testimony of James to be true. That a man who lacked wisdom might ask of God and obtain and not be abraded. Sorry guys. Ah. I think this whole week we've been uh, it's like this is the last come for me come follow me lesson for the week. So this whole week has really just been teaching us about this experience. And uh, a lot of the lessons have been helping us understand that if you have any questions, that we should take it to the Lord ourselves and ask God, and He will give us our answers. And we've also been talking about personal revelation, how that works for us, you know, um, that we can actually communicate with God. If we are unsure about things, we can actually communicate with Him. And I really like the example in here from a, a young boy, 14 years old. Look, I'm nearly 50. I'm 50 this year, actually. 
and uh, I'm still learning. Uh, but I really admire the example of Joseph that he, well, for his faith, for one, his courage and determination, despite all the persecution he went through, um, he did not, he did not uh, deny his his faith in, in his testimony. He stayed true to his testimony of the things that he actually witnessed. And I don't think anyone has a right really to take anybody's truth away from them. What you believe to be true is your own truth. And, um, you know, it, it, it's a, I don't know, I guess it's part of life when we go through these things, these trials, you know, being sorely persecuted for the things that we believe to be true. Um, I, I just really love this example of this young 14 year old boy um, and his faith and courage to, to continue. But I also like that he knew what truth was. I mean, he could, he, no, he could not deny the, um, the experience in which he had, for he knew that it took place and nothing was going to change that. No fear of man was going to change that. Um, okay, so let's go to a little bit of discussion. So we just finished reading Joseph Smith History 1, verses 21 to 26. And if you didn't, uh, if you come into the life late, then go in and search for yourself, you know. Um, but the question that is asking us, come follow me, is asking us. Um, another thought too is when you are going through your reading, like I usually just mark, highlight some of the verses, uh, the key verses that I like, and elaborate on those. But feel free to write down your own impressions of what you get, um, yeah, some of the thoughts and insights and impressions you get. Anyway, the question for this reading is, as you read, what inspires you to remain true to your testimony? Let that sink into your mind <laughs> and let that sink into your heart. As you read, what inspires you personally to remain true to your own testimony? Um, all right, so that's one question. Um, hmm, what inspires you to remain true to your testimony? That's a good question. I do have some thoughts in my mind and I'll share them as I go through to the next experience. The second question is, what other examples from the scriptures or people you know give you courage to stay true to the spiritual experiences you have had? Hmm, that's another good question. Uh, so it comes down to the application. What does this lesson mean to us personally? And here are these two questions that invite us to ponder that, okay? So the first one was, as you read, what inspires you to remain true to your, to your own testimony? Are the things that you believe to be true, that you know to be true, um, according to the gospel, which is what this is all about? Joseph Smith bore record to him, to his truth, which was the first vision that it actually happened, and people denied him for openly speaking about that. And, and it's surprising because they were men of God. And um, why would they react in such a way? You know, if they, if they, uh, you know, it just seemed a bit, uh, um, I don't know, a bit strange that they would react in, in such a way, especially if they know who God is. Um, I guess we, we come under that kind of, some kind of persecution like that today. Uh, when we openly talk about things that we believe are true, like I, I have, man, a little experience, man. I've um, I've been sharing um, scriptures, uh, scriptures I love. They're not just any scripture. They're, they're scriptures I love, um, spiritual things that I love on Facebook a lot. And I know I've I've come under a little persecution for some of the things that I post. I guess people are you know that comes with social media life that you will get judged for the things that you post um i don't think i've had anybody you know openly come forward and like mock me for it but i i guess there are some who may not agree um but what i i really have been grateful for is that most for the most part people have respected me for the things that i've posted and it, I, I tell you it has drawn a lot of um attention to people who are not of my faith um, and I've actually regretted um, in some situations that I've not done enough in sharing because there were two people uh, I used to share quite a bit on my personal page um, but now that I've created a, a, a private page for it all 
I don't share so much on my, my personal page. That's usually for family stuff. But um, I had an experience like when I used to share um, uh, Book of Mormon scriptures on my personal page. I had two people who weren't of our faith who were really interested in some of the scriptures as, as if it was talking, you know, the scriptures, those verses, those words were speaking to them as if God was speaking to them. And um, I didn't share enough about it. And uh, I, I actually, I stopped doing that. And um, well, these two people had passed on, you know, they passed away. And I was kind of like kicking myself that I didn't do enough. Um, but at the same time, I understand how the gospel works. They will be taught on the other side. <laughs> um, and that's another lesson. What happens to us when we die? Actually, we're doing a plan of salvation today, so that is a good timing. We find out what happens to us when we die. It is not the end. Life continues. Uh, our journey continues. Okay. So let me answer these questions for you. And I'm just going to share an experience as I usually do. Okay. <sighs> So, how do these questions apply to me and my family? Okay, so I've written a few things here and I hope they make sense to you. I'm going to tell you a little something which popped into my mind. So, you know, when you, the Spirit always tells you to share things and for me, I share a lot of things and I, I, I like to think they are things that come from promptings of the spirit and I, and I have no fear in sharing them when, when those opportunities arise. Anyway, after reading these questions, what inspires you to remain true to your testimony despite the persecution really? That's what it's saying. So I'd like to share a little something about my husband's uh, conversion story and this is it. Okay, my husband's conversion. People mocked him and us both um, and even our family uh, had perhaps maybe say today. Yeah, I just if well, I'm thinking about writing my things down, I, I can't really read my writing properly. So just in short, it just talks about how my when my husband was converted, like in two thousand and one. It's like twenty years ago, and just this week we uh, did celebrate the end of our wedding anniversary, which was the wedding baptism. And so the highlight for him was, you know, we love being married together and that's that's easy but a highlight for him this week was his um you know 20th anniversary of his baptism uh let me see if i can read this okay 20 years on we are still here uh to me i look at him and he looks at me and we look to christ okay so just to explain that a bit uh looking for examples who inspires us um, to remain true to our testimony. I, you know, when we got married, uh, well, even before we got married, it's been a commitment uh, that we made to each other that we were going to do this journey together and care for our family. So we've always had our that in mind to look after each other first and also our children. And that's very hard to, to do it on your own, especially when you don't know how to do it. So we've been looking to Christ. And anytime we encourage us to do something we just do it we don't think of what we want to do we think of what he wants us to do and so we've continued that journey now we did um go he went under a lot of persecution when he first changed his life when he stopped doing all the things that the world does you know he was doing all sorts of worldly things um i i'm not sure yeah i was too but you know what helped us despite it was quite sad when we were going through the persecution, like our friends stopped coming to see us anymore. They, they, they just completely stopped. They, it was as if we were not the same, you know. So, uh, we, we lost a lot of friends when we changed. Like we stopped doing a lot of things that our friends were doing. But we still love our friends, but um, you know, they just stopped coming to see us. And so we also started to get a bit of persecution from our, our families. Some of our families were forthcoming about it, about the change. But um, in some way they just, you know, respect us and move on. You know, it's never easy when you go through those things. But our persecution was not as severe as Joseph Smith's was. But, um, you know, what do you do in these days when you go through that kind of persecution? Okay, our children also... Uh, 
for we are also responsible for them. Yeah, it just kind of talks about how we were responsible as parents to care for our children and raise them the right way. Despite our challenges, despite the persecution we had from friends and family, despite all that stuff, it didn't matter. But what mattered is that we had a firm testimony in our faith in Christ that he would lead us and direct us. And, you know, it's been 20 years we've been together. Um, and our children are nearly 30 now. Our youngest is 13. Um, it's an onward journey. It will, you know, the journey never ends. When you become a parent, it's next level. Um, it's not just about you, it's actually about your family too. And sometimes, uh, well, for us personally, we didn't know what we needed to do to improve. And it took um, us to find the truth which we have in the gospel. Um, and we have only, <laughs> we just lived the gospel, you know, over the last 20 years and it has kept us safe. And, um, you know, we feel blessed. But, however, it's not perfect. It's not a perfect journey. Okay, let's carry on here. We look to faithful examples in scripture, yes. So every morning we read our scriptures that it says here. Daily we read scriptures together for faith, and courage, and inspiration. You know, we're going through some difficult times um, with the COVID here. We're not as bad as other parts of the country or um, other countries in the world. We're not, we're not as bad where we're living. But despite, you know, our circumstances, we're, we're doing pretty okay. doesn't mean you, you, you don't need the Lord. You need the Lord every single day. Remember, Satan never sleeps, so... You know, stay on point. Stay on point and read your scriptures. So that's what my husband and I do every morning. Um, even as Joseph did, he, in his persecuted state, looked to the Apostle Paul in Joseph Smith History 21, uh, 1, 21 to 26. So I guess uh, Joseph also looked to examples in scriptures and um, we can do that too. One example... I look to, um, there's many, Alma is one of my favourites, he's from the Book of Mormon, um, I love Alma, and uh, despite all the tough times that he had, he still stayed true to his testimony, there's many other greats, you know, Job was another, uh, his own friends started persecuting him and blaming him for the reason why he was going through some hard times, um, you know, there's many people from scriptures that can help us overcome these uh, these trials. Okay, if you're looking for strength to endure trials, um, even trials from friends and loved ones, or persecution of all sorts, Heavenly Father has given us beautiful examples um, of defenders of faith in scriptures. Uh, look for them. Look to Christ and, and live and live. Um, there's a scripture in Doctrine and Covenants section 6 verse 36 and it says, Look unto me and every thought doubt not, fear not. Um, and I think, well for us, how do we deal with persecution? We just do it. We don't give up. We know what we, we, I think we, well every morning we, we talk together. <laughs> My husband and I talk together and we try and strengthen our faith in each other. We look to each other and we look to our Heavenly Father and we look to our Savior Jesus Christ. And we look to our prophet too, you know, um, receiving counsel in these uncertain times is um, it's pretty difficult doing things on your own, but you don't have to do it alone. Uh, the counsel that we get from the prophet has been, you know, life changing. One of his counsel was... Uh, for members to do their, their part in sharing the gospel. Since we've been doing this, it has only strengthened our testimonies. It has only helped us um, gain understanding and, you know, strengthen our faith. We're not perfect at all. We have our trials just like any other family, but uh, we find joy in, in doing the Lord's work um, as best we can. Like I said, we're not perfect, you know. We just keep it real <laughs> and we share our love for God every single day and um, our Savior Jesus Christ also. Uh, well, this is all we have to share. We will be back at 4.30 with the Sister Missionaries for the second discussion, which is the plan of salvation. Then 
it, it doesn't matter if you have been a member for a long time it doesn't matter if you're not a member it doesn't matter what faith you're from you know just come and see uh, there's always room for more learning and understanding to help your families and to help you help each other improve um, in closing, I'd just like to be in my testimony that I know that these things are true. These things that we have spoken of are indeed true. Um, and I'm grateful for the testimony of Joseph Smith. I'm grateful for the account that we can read um, of him to strengthen our own testimonies of who he was and, and how he restored the gospel and um, just the beautiful experiences that he went through. The good and the not good, you know, opposition and all things. Um, our lives will not be perfect even like Joseph his life was not perfect um, but he knew where to find peace he knew where to find joy and that's with him with Father. we can do the same don't make it so complicated for yourself uh, yeah I bear witness of all these things and I say these things humbly in the name of Jesus Christ Amen Amen everybody um, come join us at 4.30 and the sister missionaries will be here Okay, love you. We are going to have prayer and then we'll close up, okay? Alright, I'll say the prayer. Okay. My dear Father in heaven, we thank you for this wonderful time, opportunity we have to come together and learn and share with each other. We pray for a blessing upon those who watch in today that thy spirit may help them to receive personal revelation for themselves as they ask of God. Uh, come unto thee in prayer and supplication that thou would answer the prayers and the desires of their hearts and be grateful Father for the opportunity that we have to come unto thee in prayer and we're grateful for the spirit that is able to help us understand these things and to learn truth and we're grateful for Father for this wonderful opportunity and we say these things humbly in the name of our son jesus christ amen amen bye everybody bye come back at 4 30. Bye.